All right, welcome back to the channel, or welcome if you're new. So we've got a, a, a variation on the uh, last deck that I posted for the uh, Vintage Singleton format, which I hope that you do check out. If you're intimidated at all online, the uh, cards to acquire the deck are quite cheap, to be honest, uh, compared, to <laughs> compared to offline at the very least. Um... I think you can get a mock sapphire for like ten bucks or twenty bucks or something. I mean, it's it's not free, but <laughs> you know, it's not two thousand either or whatever they cost on offline. Um, I do recommend though, in paper, you, you use proxies and just and just play that way if you're going to do it. Uh, in the meantime, though, I had some interesting total results over the last few days since I've been playing. Um, this is my win loss record: fifteen total wins. Uh, not counting this one because my opponent just conceded. I think he loaded the wrong deck. And then 17 total losses. And this is playing against full power vintage decks. That's pretty cool, actually. I kind of kind of like the fact that I'm almost... I'm running a little shy of 50-50 with, with the uh, most powerful decks in the entire game. So I think that's pretty cool. Uh, there are some matches, too, where I know that uh, trying to win is basically hopeless. But, you know, I played it anyway or... Whatever. In, in the case, for example, in this match against uh, Forbadden with his deck, um, it's a full-powered workshops deck in Vintage. Um, basically means you only beat it if you're playing a Force of Will deck, and uh, I only have two of them, not, uh, not four. Or in the case of uh, Tom Babadil here, I don't have eight. Uh, he, this guy literally, I think he runs eight Force of Wills. I'm guessing, because just how often he has them, but he runs four forces and four force and negations, and I think he runs fluster storms too, and then a bunch of other stuff. That um, the bottom line is, it's it's a nearly hopeless match, or, or or basically hopeless. We would have to play, I don't know how many games we would have to play before I, before I could finally like win two and one. I mean, you could figure out what my win ratio is and make some assumptions and do some math on it, but it wouldn't be looking good. Be here for a very very long time. Um, it's just that when your opponent can do what they're doing and counter your spells for zero mana, um, turn after turn after turn after turn after turn, it's pretty hard to win. And the deck runs four wastelands, and it gets like I think I think he's running four as a saga and like orc uh, orcish. Um, I forget what they're called orcish. Bowmasters and stuff like it's just absolutely utterly impossible for this deck to win but what you will see here is that I have changed the deck from a red base a red splash to a green splash which I think is kind of interesting and I've also added a few more tech cards and a few other things my sideboard is a little bit more complicated I think more perhaps more interesting um, I have uh, man of mana crypt uh, so the reason that Mana Crypt is in the sideboard is that with Karn, what you want to do is you want to go get Micah Symbolatus, and then your opponent's permanents cannot tap. They have no abilities uh, because they all become artifacts. So what you do is uh, you can play Karn on four and then go get Mana Crypt. And then on the next turn, you play Mana Crypt, and you now have six mana, and use Karn to go get Micah Symbolatus. And then you um, have the lock, and then if you're at low life total... Uh, you can uh, plus Karn on your Mana Crypt. So assuming you don't die during your upkeep, like if you're at three and you lose a flip, then, you know, that's that. But if you're at four or whatever and you, you, you lose the flip and go down to one, then you can plus Karn and kill your own Mana Crypt and then you win the game. So uh, Karn also has just as a uh, potential out in certain circumstances... Uh, it has Voltaic Key so that you can go get uh, the second half of the Time Vault combo. And it has uh, Zurin Orb so that um, you can go get the second half of the Balance combo if, if needed. If needed. Um, one card that I'm not using in here that might be a, an interesting card uh, is the blue-green um, creature that says tap to untap target permanent. It probably makes a lot of sense. And there's uh, potentially potentially room for this. Uh, I, I don't think this deck is by any means complete. I think this is just me trying different things to see what I can do. Uh, one of the things I found is that, um, is that of course, blue is a dominant color in, in Vintage, and so having uncounterables is really st strong, and so I 
have increased the amount of things that are uh, uncounterable that have good effects for me, like uh, Supreme Verdict uh, as a Wrath of God that I can force a will with, but also can't be countered uh, by those uh, pesky blue mages like me. Uh, then I also have uh, Dovin's Veto so that I can stop things that absolutely must be stopped. I have Mind Break Trap so that I can um, exile uh, Dovin's Veto if I face a card that's, uh, or a fluster storm if my opponent hits me with uh, something like this. Perhaps it's their third spell of the turn and maybe I can exile all copies of their spells. Um, and then I have uh, Abrupt Decay, which is also removal that can't be countered. So I have a few things like that. There are other non-counterable things. There's also the interesting, I think, idea of potentially running the um, uh, Hobbit, or I, I can't remember what it's called, but it's the one green uh, taps for a colorless, or it taps for mana of any color that you can then use to play legendary uh, spells, legendary spells that can't be countered. So that thing would probably be really good in here. Maybe it should be in the sideboard, or, or perhaps it should just be in the main, simply because playing a card like Leovold, uncounterable, or an Oko, or Teferi, uncounterable, and Narset, uncounterable, all these plays are like, extraordinarily strong against uh, blue. And it might make sense to run it in this deck. And plus, it is a mana source after all, and um, not a bad thing necessarily. But a lot of the cards that are in here have been chosen um, as a result of my experiences with uh, Vintage Proper. So I don't know what I don't know what I would be doing necessarily. Um, like I need actual opponents here for the VS for the uh, Vintage Singleton format in order to actually start getting a feel for. Uh, what kind of adjustments I might need to make for that meta game? I'm just sort of predicting based on based on the kind of decks that I'm seeing in Vintage that this might be pretty good. So uh, there's some tech cards in here. There's uh, of course you saw the Leovold, and then in addition to Leovold, I've got Hall Breacher on three, and Narset on three. So we've got three different three mana, and one Orcish Bowmasters, one two mana punish with the Singleton Time Twister. Um, I'm not obviously running Wheel of Fortune, but I've got the Time Twister that I can use to um, just sort of end a game with those cards. And uh, what else? I actually have included Stoneforge along with Batterskull. It gives me a aggressive way to kill Planeswalkers. Uh, it gives me a solid way to protect Planeswalkers, and it also gives me a way to close the game out quickly or just protect my life total. Um, and every hit with a Batterskull combos quite nicely with a... Uh, extra card off of Sylvan Library, which is not a bad thing at all. Um, and uh, it is a also a tinker target if I'm in an emergency, a tinker target that can help me against aggro, uh, against a, like one of the better uh, tinker targets against aggro is a Sphinx of the Steel Wind. Um, however, I don't like the fact that that card, um, it's, other than, like, it, because it's blue, you can force a will with it. Um, if you're not familiar, I'll, I'll go ahead and bring it up for you here. But uh, I don't like the fact that uh, that card... Here's Sphinx of the Steel Wind. So, fantastic card. Um, but extreme, it, pretty darn hard to play. I mean, if you get a workshop, you can shave some mana off of that. And then the card's basically, like, six mana to play. That's still a, a lot. Um... GPS is six, but with a workshop is like, you know, four because the shop itself plus three other lands. So anyway, you, so you basically take two off of the cost. So I suppose that means that this is essentially seven. Um, so not a card that you're going to be hard casting much. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, a great card if you are concerned about aggro, maybe in your sideboard, and a pretty good card against uh, if you're going to run. Uh, Oath of Druids. But I'm not running Oath of Druids here because I find that having access to like Leovold is extremely good. Opposition Agents, great. Hull Breacher's great. Trinket Mage. Uh, you know, we want to go get Soul Ring, but we can certainly just go get like Black Lotus and basically it costs no mana and gives us a huge boost on the next turn potentially. Um, Spellseeker to just go get Time Walker. Ancestral Recalls, fantastic. Um, what other creatures do I have in here? I think that's mostly it. Of course, there's the uh, the Bowmasters that uh, are very strong. Oh, there is the Skydiver in a you know format loaded with Moxes and Soul Ring and such. 
and Snapcaster because we really do like casting Time Walk and Ancestral Recall whenever we can. Stoneforge, the obvious to go with the Batter Skull. So for all that reasons, I'm not running the Oath. And then Haywire Might, and you're like, why is Haywire Might? It seems a little underpowered, but and it, admittedly, it's not phenomenal. But um, having a card that I can easily... It's a disenchant that I can tinker into if I absolutely have to. Like, for example, my opponent has... Uh, I don't know, somehow like managed to put Time Vault and Manifold Key into play, but they didn't have enough mana to actually activate it. I can't win the game, so I tinker into Haywire Might and just get the Exile the Time Vault out of the game or, you know, the key or whatever. So that, that can be a scenario for it, but mainly it's in there because um, it's a disenchant that I can fetch with Urza Saga if I need to or with um, Trinket Mage. So, I mean, I can Trinket Mage for it, I can Tinker for it, I can Saga for it, I can uh, Tezzered for it, so I have a, a lot of uh, ways that I can Haywire Might um, <clears throat> to get myself out of a, a potentially a tough spot. And uh, Haywire Might also um, does Exile, which means that it gives me a solution to the One Ring. And the One Ring is certainly a card that you, you would expect to see in a Vintage deck. So, it actually has a nice and a little bit of life gain, uh, you know, of course, never hurts. Um, inci incidentally, this deck, this version of the deck is much more life gain than the, the red deck. We've got Batter Skull, as I mentioned, but we've also got uh, the Haywire Might, which can give us a couple. Nature's Claim, which if we want to, we can always claim our own target if we need to, and uh, certainly, you know, Might, just because we could trade life for Sylvan Library or, you know, convert it to life with uh, the One Ring. Like, if, <coughs> for example, if we're needing to use this a few more times or whatever. Um, you've also got uh, Oko, which is really nice. And uh, Oko, uh, Oko and Teferi both are resets for the One Ring, as well as, of course, Haywire might potentially exiling it. So we have multiple ways to solve our own One Ring if we get into some kind of a situation where we're concerned about uh, potentially losing to it. So we have solutions here um, in black red you have like the ready where you can sacrifice it here we can just turn it into a 3-3 three, three and continue to hit our opponent with it of course we have the old school attack of like carning it into a not old school but the um the constant tech i mean karn is karn is always going to be in vintage for sure and uh, basically any deck that i build in any format where he's legal just about Karn will show up, so there's always Karning the One Ring and then doing something like Swords to Plowshares in it or, or balancing it away, but, um, you know, those are, now you're getting, I mean, maybe jacing it or something, but you're getting pretty, you're getting pretty deep with these uh, potential solutions. I also have four colors of mana in this deck, so I could, like, prismatic ending it, but, you know, none of those are, none of those are, are super great, but it's nice to have, when you construct, it's always nice to ask yourself, like, what do I do in X circumstance? Like, my One Ring is killing me, or my, my Mana Crypt is killing me, if you, ha like, have, say, Karn grabbed it and whatnot. And uh, so I always like to think about solutions to those problems uh, before they crop up, so that when they come up, because inevitably they will, then I have a solution. Of course, tinkering away the One Ring when I'm done with it is probably the best solution. Now, you might say that there are other things. I'm currently, by the way, not running uh, Transmute Artifact. This is yet another card that sounds really good to me, uh, if you're not familiar with this, and uh, and lends itself very well to putting together the Time Vault combo, as well as just Batter Skull, One Ring, God Pharaoh Statue, and stuff like that. The nice thing about Transmute Artifact is it sacrifice an artifact on resolution, unlike Tinker, where you sacrifice it on casting cost. Um, but it does <coughs> have limits on... You do have to have mana to pay the differential for an artifact that you get. Like, if you sac a um, Haywire Might that costs one mana, you can go get a Soul Ring, no problem. But if you sack a Haywire Might and you go get, like, a God Pharaoh statue, you have to pay the difference. You have to pay five more mana, or else the God Pharaoh statue just dies on the spot. Um, that, mm, that basically doesn't matter too much if you're putting together, like, the Time Vault uh, Manifold Key combo, because those are going to be generally pretty cheap. However, um, however... Uh, the the card itself, I just I wasn't sure where it fits in the deck. I, I feel like it probably should be in here. I had it in initially, but uh, I just don't really see a cut yet. I need more. I need actual games of VS to uh, really figure out where my cuts are. Um, and it's just like over here on the sideboard where I've got like Lauren at the third bat. That seems like a a clear 
immediate, like, obviously good card in Vintage. Um, one of the neat tricks with uh, Lauren is that uh, because it taps to um, cause my opponent to draw a card, so I can combine Lauren with... So first of all, I can kill, like, a Mox or a Soul Ring or something. I can combine it with, like, Narset. I can combine it with Leovold. I can combine it with Hall Breacher, or I can combine it with Orcish Bowmasters, and I can... Uh, you know, force my opponent to draw an extra card when it's not it's not good for them, but good for me, and give myself more cards. That seems like a great thing. But also, uh, it combines with Caracas. It's legendary, so I can I can bounce it back to my hand and then just continuously uh, Octavia Orangutan my opponent. So it's like kill something, tap to draw a card, kill something, tap to draw a card, that kind of thing. Tons of value, um, potentially. Uh, the reason it's in my sideboard, though, is because against, like, really fast aggressive matches i don't think that it's that's that's sort of a long slow grindy thing and i'm not sure that uh i'm not sure that there's necessarily time to do that so i've got it on the board but i <clears throat> i'm on the fence it seems so good to me that it, pro it probably should be in the main just because of the moxes and stuff in the format but i don't know what i would cut uh to be honest um, I like having one mana solutions to zero mana artifacts. I've got, you know, Prismatic Ending, I've got Portable Hole, I've got Fragmentize, I've got Nature's Claim, and then this one is a two mana answer, but, you know, I've got that as well, and then of course we've got Skydiver and stuff, and, and Abrupt Decay, so it's like, I've got a lot of cheap solutions to, to early ramp, but, or at least to, sub, you know, disrupt them somewhat, and having more doesn't suck, but, um, yeah, don't know. Um, in along those lines, I have uh, pest infestation in the sideboard. Seems really good to me. Um, these two cards also both, by the way, get really strong if my opponent is playing in Urza Saga uh, because they can hit lands. But uh, um, so I, I sideboarded men against like the four Saga vintage decks. But in Singleton, that probably won't matter anywhere near as much. Um, other cards in the sideboard I think should be fairly self-explanatory. Blue Elemental Blast and Hydro Blast, just a little and chill. A little bit of insurance against uh, red decks, making their spells cost two more to cast and counter or destroy. Basically, this helps me against, like, um, the nice thing about not playing five colors is that I can put in color hosers, um, and it doesn't affect me. Uh, so uh, another color hoser that's really great from so uh, Destiny is uh, Compost because it's single. It, it hoses your opponent and not you. So here I have a black um, card hoser that doesn't punish me, which is really nice. Uh, whenever black card's put in my opponent's graveyard from anywhere, I may draw a card, which is totally nuts if they're playing some kind of um, if they're playing some kind of uh, I don't know uh, reanimator strategy, right, or something like that. Veil of Summer, which is good against both blue and black, and like I said, the extra disenchant, a couple extra counters. These are essentially. The equivalent of, I don't get Red Elemental Blast because I'm not playing Red, so I have the blue version, which is uh, Flusterstorm, Miscast, and uh, Mystical Dispute. So these are my three uh, Red Elemental Blasts that I can happen to force a will with, which is cool. I have Lavinia, in case my opponent is playing um, some kind of crazy combo deck. Uh, it's just a really good, really disruptive card, very frustrating card to have to deal with. And um, I just, I need to cut... The, the what I was thinking is that Lavinia and Lauren are my cuts if Time Twister and Balance just don't seem good against whatever my opponent's doing. For example, I just you know take Time Twister out, put in Lauren, and take Liv Balance out and put in Lavinia, and I'm probably fine. And uh, the rest of the cuts, if I'm playing against Blue, I just bring in the uh, super cheap counters, and what I do is I take out Enlightened Tutor, uh, Mystical Tutor, Imperial Seal. Um, I just take those hard disadvantage tutors out and I just play the one for ones and then just run a, a, a tighter game uh, against my opponent so s stuff like that um, other than that uh, of course compost is also super good against discard by the way um, if it wasn't immediately obvious um, and then uh, mana crypt is just like I said a tutor target for Karn uh, Mike Synthlatis tutor car target for Karn Kias and Zernor as well so that's my those are my thoughts on the sideboard and the cards that I'm not using in my colors that uh, probably would be really good. I just don't know how to fit all of that in. I don't know what I would cut. I don't know where the space works out. I feel like the untappy guy of the three might be, and and the and the Hobbit or whatever um, can't be countered, right? This thing, if I could just 
My brain would just work and remember the names of new things. I'm getting old. I only remember old things. Um, delighted halfling. So I, I feel like of all the things I'm not using, delighted halfling seems like it'd be really good. The other one that's really good that you might have thought of as you looked at this deck, but you might have also not thought of if you're a commander player, is uh, this one. Uh, because as a commander player, you're not allowed to play this card uh, quite often because of the color requirements. Um, and, uh, and I, in fact, I can't even remember, is this even legal in Commander? I can't remember the old band list. Um, Commander band list. If that thing's legal or not, but it's so rare that I can, it's so rare that I can ever actually play the card. Uh, no, so it's not banned, it's just difficult because of the colors. But, yeah, um, Deathrite Chum is another card that's really good, um, you know, potentially life gain, uh, attacking their life total, making mana, attacking their graveyard. Seems really good. And so that card and the um, and the one two, I'm not sure if I should be running those or not. But everything's a trade off, right? If you're going to put something in, you got to take something out. And it's like, what do I cut at that point? And then at what point do I add so many creatures that I'm like, well, maybe I should also be running Guy's Cradle, you know? So a lot of crazy thoughts, but. Um, you know, there's grist, there's there's just a lot of things you could be doing in this format. And that's kind of my point. So I hopefully you are thinking about what you could be doing in the format and maybe you will kind of put something together and start doing it. We can have some fun playing Magic. Uh, in the meantime, I thought I would show you... I will show you um, sort of uh, the four uh, Babadans... This is zero two zero. Um, this is me getting blown out by vintage doing vintage things. There's just no point in. Uh, there was no point in playing against this deck again, and I think my opponent certainly realized it. I mean, look at my hand, right? This is this is a phenomenal hand, or could be, <clears throat> in a singleton game. But in a vintage game, this is just garbage, right? So my opponent lotuses into Grim and Grims into. Grim, I, I have no idea why Grim Monolith is unrestricted, by the way. I, in fact, I don't understand the restricted list at all because so many things are unrestricted that uh, probably shouldn't be. And from here, I know I'm dead because my opponent is just going to go get... Um, he's just going to go get uh, either Jewel Lotus or... Uh, sorry, Coveted Jewel or uh, more than likely um, Boas of Citadel and I die. Possibly... Uh, the one ring, and then they can tap it, and then untap it, and tap it. So, and then in game two, uh, much the same. Hand seems good here. I even got fragmentized to interact if my opponent tutors. And take a look and see if I can find a, a counter. No, but I got some fast mana in case they try to disrupt mine. But uh, no, he's just doing vintage things with a bunch of cards that aren't restricted. I feel like every card that makes more mana than what it... Um, then what it costs should be restricted. And then here I've, you know, I've had enough. So anyway, um, yeah. So that was that. But um, And then we started a new game, and he decided to bring a different deck. And so I actually ended up crushing that deck because I got to do vintage things, and I had some time to do it. So my opponent wasn't just shooting out, you know, 13 mana on turn one or whatever. I've got a pretty nuts start here, actually. And I don't know if you see it, but I have multiple ways to complete the combo here provided I can you know protect it or make it happen so I do lose the die roll so I'm going to lead with Urza's Saga and I'm leading with Saga because I want this to activate very quickly for reasons that hopefully are obvious if you think about it but if not you will see soon and that is okay if you didn't um but anyway my opponent's got turn to Oko that should be a heck of a good start against me um considering I barely have any creatures to deal with it. However, I'm going to take another turn, and then I'm going to float some mana, grab a Manifold Key, Demonic Tutor into Black Lotus, Lotus into a Time Vault. I'm going to pause. Okay, so I just want to explain why I did that. I Lotus into a Time Vault pre-combat with one blue floating and a blue untapped and a Mana Drain in hand. Why? Because if my opponent has any kind of Force of Will or Force of Negation, I can Mana Drain it, then declare my attack step, exit my attack step, and with the mana that I get from the mana drain, manifold key my time vault. 
one who didn't have interaction, so I just wasted my Lotus. But who cares if I waste a Black Lotus? There's no reason to protect resources when I have a game-winning play, which is now uh, doing what it does. So my opponent gets vintaged out. And uh, wants to see my uh, win condition. So I, uh, you know, of course... I'm holding cards, by the way, if you notice me not playing lands. I'm not playing lands because there's always a chance that I draw a Library of Alexandria, and then I can speed up my win. But once I see Batter's Skull and I have an Academy, and I realize I can just quickly go ahead and just beat my opponent's head in quickly, I can batter their skull quickly, and my opponent, of course, realizes that. He says, okay, he's seen the win con, so he scoops, and we go into game two. And... Uh, I get to do a whole different level of broken, and the nice thing is I get to kind of terrorize my opponent with this mana, this time vault, but it's total bait for this hand. That's not really how this hand's planning on winning. I mean, it could, because remember, I do have Karn in my hand, and I have that key in the sideboard. So I can get the Karn down, I can grab the key out of the sideboard. I have Voltaic key, Manifold key in the main and Voltaic key in the side. But my real game plan is slamming Hall Breacher here. It sticks. I'm completely shocked so I go for time twister because if they had a counter spell they counter spell hall breacher not and instead he has a boseju to kill my time vault and this is the funniest thing so my opponent can't draw seven cards and of course I get seven mana and this is the hand that I get this and lotus now there's lots of ways to win the game here obviously I'm probably have already won the game here but of course with the forbidden orchard my opponent could draw uh, oath of druids cast those of druids here so it would be smart to get a counter spell um you would think however i realized you know what i've got something even better going on so i uh sack here and fabricate into manifold key i go ahead and play the key and then i uh merchant scroll into muddle the mixture now my opponent concedes here but had he not i mean it, I assume he thinks I'm getting Ancestral or whatever. I don't know what he thinks I'm getting. But I go get Muddle the Mixture. So I sack three mana and transmute Muddle the Mixture. And I go get the Time Vault my opponent disenchanted before the Time Twister. And then with three mana, I spend two of it to play Time Vault and the exact one treasure token to untap it. And so despite the fact that my opponent um, uh, disenchanted my Time Vault... Uh, on this turn, I am going to replay my one and only Time Volt and uh, win with it. And I thought that was just kind of fun and cool. Um, and totally ridiculous, broken, vintage stuff. But I think this is this is what happens when, I mean, let's be fair, my opponent did nothing, right? He he cycled a, he cycled the land, like that was his entire that was his entire play. So it's not that hard or not that amazing to win. Which incidentally made me think, maybe I should be running a Boseju. Maybe I should run the, the, the blue land as well, the bounce land. Um, but again, space is tight in this deck. I don't know where I would find that. I think I think it was just fun to, you know, see crazy vintage stuff happening. Um, if we take a look at taking out the commander and stuff and just look at the vintage games again. Um, if you want to see, I suppose I'll throw one more in there just so you can see what it's like playing against the the Bombadil deck. Let's try one where I actually get at least one game win in. And uh, you'll see why it's essentially impossible to win a match. Alright. In this game, it's possible I misplayed, but I don't think so because the problem with uh, doing otherwise is I did. So the thing is, against his deck, you kind of have to go all in and... and, and and pray that, uh, it, it, that that my opponent can't interact um, because it's it's there's so many force of wills. If you can stick one, you probably win because there's no way to do anything about or very little you can do about um, things. And I've got a spell snare here, which stops one of his only interactive spells, but uh, for permanence. But my opponent does have a force of will with an echoing truth. So this is what I this is what I could have spell snared at this point. I've played him enough times to know. However, um, it's it's a, it's an eight force of will deck. Like, what am I supposed to, what am I supposed to do? You know, I guess what I could have done was waited and tried to draw 
something useful, but what are the chances that I'm going to draw like a, a, a counter that I can... Oh, really? So, in fact, I did draw a counter. Um, part of the reason... So, interestingly, the reason that the 8 Force Soul deck is even viable is because of this amazing card, Lorien Revealed. Because you can run four of those in place of islands, um, you now have the ability to force a will with four of your lands, which is something you could have never done before. And you only need to force a will a couple times early, and then later you can cast the Lorien Revealed and refill and get all that lost value back. Totally insane card that just completely changes the game. Unfortunately, Portable Hole will not kill Inner's Saga. Uh, it's a non-land. It will kill the Construct token here, but... Uh, doesn't too much matter. So I stop my opponent Slovenia here. You get to kind of see what losing looks like, unfortunately. Like I said, um, five cards in hand over there. I'm just going to test a bait spell and then go for a Jace. And then, yeah, it doesn't stick. Because it's just all four wells all the way down. All right, Soul Ring. Uh, and I mean, it's a Loris deck too, so uh, now my opponent has a draw engine going in their Force of Will deck, which means, uh, well, it means I'm probably toast, is what it means. Well, I can bounce the Loris, but my opponent has a Wasteland, so it's not exactly amazing. It does stop their draw engine, possibly. Let's see. I can try to stop their draw engine, so let's try. Alright, so that stopped, theoretically. But, and hey, look at that, maybe I'm in this game, I can get an Ancestral. So I actually get to Ancestral, it resolves here. I get to kill their Soul Ring. But I did draw two lands, and that's a double brick. Surprisingly resolves when it's going to strip my Caracas, strip my... Uh, oh yeah, and they also run four Wastelands. It's like four Wastelands, four, four uh, Urza Sagas. Like, it's such a nightmare deck to have to face. All right, so we'll ponder. Hey, this is something. All right, Wastelands are gone. Let's get that Academy down. I like my next card, so I'm not going to shuffle. And hey, I've got one damage per turn pressure. 18 more turns and I win. A waste time, but my opponent's kind of hurting for mana there, so maybe. All right, let's go. One goes for Lavinia, and then tries to waste me. I'm going to float some mana and pass. I'm trying to actually get him with this opposition agent. I do need another land in order to uh, play my Force of Negation, but I can't. I top deck it, so because the Lavinia stops um, non uh, non-land spells that I don't have enough my the number of lands in play has to equal the number of uh, the casting cost of a non-land spell so I'm just waiting for my opponent to well so they go for an ancestral I'm going to try to force here I get it to stick find a one ring that's amazing decide I'm not going to slam it because I want to stay on the opposition agent. Opponent goes for a flooded strand, but doesn't crack it. Damn it. Well played opponent. Alright. Well let's try to we'll get a little damage in and see if we can slam the one ring, I think. I don't know why I'm holding the one ring here. This is complete foolishness. Okay now I'm going for it. Just seems like I should have had that in play like two turns ago. I don't I don't know what I was doing there. That probably cost me this game. Anyway, going for a opposition agent and plow. Why is plow in my opponent's deck? Well, I mean it makes sense. It's a white it's a blue white control deck. Um just unfortunate that it hit there. Uh, the life will help though. I've got the one ring after all. I'm also one island away from, uh, here we go, now we get to go Manifold Key, one ring, ring it up again, and at this time I had Zuranor, uh, 
fast bond in my deck, Zernorb fast bond crucible, which allows you to generate infinite mana. I got the sense that my opponent doesn't have it. Like they would have interacted if they had a solution here. So I'm just going for it, I'm going for the win. I have billion mana, right? All right, I'm carning. Karn's hit his sticks. I'm going for the win and on the spot. Grab the lattice, boom, and I actually win this game. I actually beat the. Uh, I actually beat the control deck, and it's because my opponent only drew like two force of wills out of what was it? Half his deck. Completely unusual. Very unusual. I don't know if maybe he just sideboards up to eight or I don't. I'm not even 100 percent. He goes to eight, but it feels like it. This is definitely a keep has the potential to do some really good stuff here. All right. Even a land off the top was nice right there. So I could just go straight for the Time Twister, but I'm actually set up real nicely here to do some, some extra gnarly stuff, so I'm going to be patient. Okay, Wasteland here, I don't mind at all. I'm going to, before I vamp, I'm going to go ahead and cycle Orion Revealed, go get myself Watery Grave, and then I'm going to vamp. Opponent doesn't have a response. And vamping for, you guessed it, Hall Breacher. I assume you guessed it. Saw that Time Twister hiding in my hand. Plus, Hall Breacher against a blue deck is just good. Of course, I know that he has Plow, so it's not necessarily, like, given that I'm going to win, but I'm going to give it a shot. And nope, no chance. Ah. I guess what I could have done... Oh, and a Force. So I guess what I could have done is I could have Mystical Tutored for um, Mental Misstep and tried to win that way. But, um, of course, as we saw that my opponent also had the Force and Forced with uh, Brainstorm. So I'm trying to I'm trying to attack my opponent's mana here. I'm just got a Fluster Storm and decide I think killing a Saga is way too important here, too valuable. So I go ahead and do that. I pay the Fluster Storm price. And my opponent's down to two cards and one land. I mean, I'm, I'm in a good spot. Like, I've fought hard as a control player to get into this position. The problem is... Uh, well, I've got, a, I've got a regrowth, too. So let's get that vamp. And then from there, I can vamp into, into uh, whatever I like. And whatever I like mostly means Ancestral Recall. All right, let's go get it. <sighs> Pierced. Okay. All right. How about a mind twist for two? Oh, forced with a force and a Lotus Lavinia. And all of a sudden, just like that. And then I drew this useless transmute. And just like that, I am out of luck. Lavinia counters zero drops and um, then he strips away my other land. So now I can't play anything. And uh, yeah. I just sit here and die. And that's the game. I mean, this is the game, right? So we can fast forward, but... Um, it, yeah. Dig through time, reloads, kills me. Crazy, right? Lavinia is just such a insanely hard-to-deal-with creature. Which is why it's in my sideboard. I was impressed by it. All right, here I had the mulligan. And the mulligan again. I had Mr. Kerbora in my sideboard, so I sideboarded that in to see, you know, if that would do anything. Uh, and I go for it, and mental missteps. Free counter number one, wasteland. Okay, that's fine. I got tithe. I'm going to tithe on his turn because he can't um, uh, force a negation it. Of course, he would probably want to force a negation the Sylvan anyway, but. I'm going to go for the Sylvan. Nice top deck there, I suppose. And Force of Negation. Psh. Played around it. Didn't matter. With a land, basically. Lorian Revealed. Cycling Lorian Revealed. That card is just so insanely good. The Vintage decks are just unbelievably consistent. Like, wow. So my opponent has a Lurus available and Ancestral in hand. A top deck, a sweet Urza's Saga. I can't really remand an Ancestral, though. So that's not going to work too well for me. When it fragmentizes my Saga, it's fragmentized? Oh, God, it's brutal. 
Well, there's a merchant scroll. I'm just going to go for it because I can't stop the ancestral anyway. So let me merchant scroll and ancestral into my hand. And then that way I, f I get an island. I can play island ancestral. And then when my opponent tries to counter it inevitably, I will remand it back to my hand and I, maybe I can get in the game. Well, that's what I was thinking. But uh, look, Luris, Luris down. Free Black Lotus every turn. Wasteland. I'm never going to get any mana and I'm dead. Four Wastelands and a Strip Mine in a deck like this. Like, it's just... The colorless lands in this deck. Crushing. Um, I, I will say I'm super, super impressed. This uh, individual's control deck is, you know, fantastic and probably the kind of deck I would play in an actual vintage um, format. But, um, you know, if I was playing, like, pure... Vintage Pure. But in Singleton, it is just... Unless I get... Like the crazy Kenza draws that you saw where I actually got a win. Um, pretty hard for me to do much about about that. But anyway, that's all I've got. Hopefully you enjoyed watching this uh, alternate take on uh, Control Deck. I am still trying to figure out what works and what doesn't. And I'm still very much looking forward to um, whatever it is that you all decide to bring to the table. I am curious, for example, would this deck be better as an Oath of Druids deck? going and getting like Grizzlebrand and uh, Atraxa and stuff like that. Or maybe I should put enough green creatures and I can natural oath into Atraxa. That'd be kind of attractive too. Who knows? I don't know. But that's all I've got for now. Hopefully you enjoyed watching. Thank you very much. I'll see you next time.